as we continue to greet, we're going to, our scripture reading this morning is a little different than normal. Uh, we've got a video scripture, and the graphics are very helpful, the symbols, the imagery, but particularly pay attention when four red arrows come and zoom in on Jerusalem, because that's exactly what happened. Every Jewish man had to be in Jerusalem for the Feast of Pentecost. Uh, let's let's stand and hear the scriptures from Acts chapter two. Clint. Now, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came from the sky a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Tongues like fire appeared and were distributed to them, and one sat on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages, as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under the sky, when this sound was heard, the multitude came together and were bewildered because everyone heard them speaking in his own language. They were all amazed and were perplexed, saying one to another, What does this mean? Others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and spoke out to them, You men of Judea and all you who dwell at Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. For these aren't drunken as you suppose, seeing it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. It will be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Yes, and on my servants and on my handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. Pentecost, the Holy Spirit was given as promised by Jesus. He even told John the Baptist, John, you baptize with water. The day will come we're baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He told the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. They would receive power from on high to be witnesses for Jesus. The Spirit was given just as prophesied in Joel, as Joel chapter 2, where it says your sons and daughters are prophesied. Old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. And that's what happened. And it has been happening ever since. We've been sharing the gospel ever since. This year, as I looked into this account of Pentecost, what God showed me, something I hadn't seen, I've seen, it's a, it's a feast, the second of three major feasts. Passover was the first, where we have the Passover lamb. Jesus was the lamb of God. We have Pentecost. It is the feast of ingathering the harvest, where you bring an offering. And so we have a harvest of souls. I, I'm always fascinated by how God put big events, lined them up with the Jewish feasts. Of course, God knew what he was doing. He planned it that way. And how the believers went from fear to faith. They went from cowards to courageous. Those shut locked doors were thrown open and they left that upper room. And they didn't leave just quietly. They left preaching. And then the preacher that God called stood up and to preach the gospel to the Jews. Jesus said to Peter, on this rock I will build my church. Peter, you are the rock. You're no longer Simon. You're Peter. So Peter was the first to speak. You saw his face. And he stood up and preached. Peter, who denied knowing Jesus three times, stood up in front of thousands, if not a million Jews, and declared they crucified the Son of God. Wow. 
all that. I love all that. The change in the believer, the alignment with predictions, alignment with Exodus when the feasts were given, and the, and the giving of the Spirit, the new birth as he promised. But this year God showed me something more. When the believers were given the Holy Spirit, they received the power to present the gospel. They received confidence and an equipping to share the gospel. The word says that they were able to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, what does that mean? It means they, they, they spoke local languages of the Jewish men and women who came from those four arrows, who came from Pamphylia or Pontus or Arabia, who came from Galatia, because they had to be in Jerusalem, required by the law. Now, Ashton, come down. Come down here. Ashton told me once, she went to a church, she and a boy, Ben, it wasn't Ben, it, it, this was earlier in her life, Brenton, you're very welcome here. We're glad you're here. Danny's glad you're here. Mason's watching you carefully, but he's glad you're here. Um, Ashton went to a church with a friend, and it's great. I love it if, if you bring your boyfriends or girlfriends to church. It's the best place to get to know each other. And they're sitting in church, you know, like this. And, and that church worships a little differently than we do. And they started speaking in different tongues. And so her friend started speaking in tongues. He may have raised his hands a little bit and really was getting into it, kind of worshiping God, and everybody else was too. And, and, and Ashton said, I can't get my arm around you. All of a sudden, she was at the other end of the pew. She wasn't used to that. And it's a true story. She wasn't used to it. I'm not either. I, I, I don't I have nothing against it. Nothing against speaking in tongues. The Bible says forbid not to speak in tongues. It's fine. That's fine. If you speak in tongues, fine. You just do it orderly. That may have been a little unorderly for her, maybe not, for that church. But the whole, I want to diffuse that the people on Pentecost spoke in a different tongue. So what? Why did they do that? They weren't being selfish like the Corinthian Christians. The Corinthian Christians had a problem. They're like, look at me. I speak in tongues. I am better than you. They weren't like that. On that first day, they humbly came out of that upper room. They were given the ability to speak in the different languages to preach the gospel. And what God showed me was that there were 120 people sharing the gospel before Peter ever stood up. So when Peter stood up to preach, they were already ready. They'd already heard in their native tongue, Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is resurrected. The Holy Spirit has come. There is eternal life through faith in Jesus. There is forgiveness through his shed blood on the cross. They heard it in their native tongue. I almost thought of listing the areas of Adair County, Gradyville and Sparksville and, and, and Milltown and... What are some more areas in Adair County? Um, Niffley, Niffley, yeah, I got to get up in the northeast part, and where else? Glens Fork, yes, yes, yes. There's all kinds of places in the county. What if everybody from Adair County all gathered in Columbia for a big festival, and then we all spoke Glens Fork and Sparksville, and we spoke their local dialects? How did you learn my local dialect? That's what it was like. When, when you all, I've told you this before, when you all go out of state, when you all go up north, you stick out. You do. And I love a southern accent. If they call me to the platform at annual conference in northern Kentucky, I have a little southern accent. I hope I sound southern. Coach me on the way. Patty, coach me. Actually, Judy could coach me more. It's speaking their local language it got their attention. Hey, you're speaking my language. So they listened. And they heard the gospel. And what God showed me was that the church had the community ready for the preaching. You all get the community ready. 
so I can preach or whoever the preacher is here. God told me to preach. He called me. I didn't think this up. I just as soon be in the pew with you all than up here in the pulpit. But Jesus said, you're going to preach. And so the church gets the community ready so the called leader can offer the gospel but also give the invitation and baptize the new Christians. Now I'm looking out there. Micah, are you out there? I see you, Micah. Jericho, are you out there? Great. You guys, I've got to get you guys baptized. Awesome. Uh, Zach and Thomas, are you here? Okay. All right, thanks. Guys, good to see you. They heard the gospel and came. Because you all love them in the pews. Have they given you any candy, you guys? Sometimes they do. They get, Huh? Some? Gum? All right. You all, more candy. No, hard candy. And then after church, Reese's Cups and Hershey bars. They heard and they came and they're saved and they're ours. Hilda, your granddaughter is back. She's been out working to spread the gospel. The church, the church spread the gospel. And so the message is about receiving power to present. And I couldn't ask you all to do something I don't, I'm not willing to do myself. This past week, Cheryl Wall posted on Facebook. Now, not everybody's on Facebook, and I'm not on there a whole lot. Um, but here's what she said. Clint, could you put those words up? She posted on June 5th, God is so amazing. He can work in so many different ways and take you down so many great paths if you'll just allow him. The paths that he will take you down may not be the path you have, have or had in mind, but I grant you that this path, his path is better and greater. Family and friends, if you do not know him personally, I encourage you to get to know him and see what he has in store for you. Cheryl just gave an invitation. I encourage you to know him personally. That's exactly right. And however many friends saw it, some people have hundreds of friends on Facebook. I read it Friday morning, and then Samantha Hadley posted something. She said this. Uh, she was coming out of a Celebrate Recovery group. I didn't think Samantha had any hurts, hang-ups, or habits, but she may have just gone to support somebody else. She said, I'm coming out of a Celebrate Recovery group on a natural high. Coincidence? I think not. God is good. So then the Lord said to me, you need to post something about your mom. Uh, I, I, I'd be happy to, Lord, but it's not going to make any big difference. All right, I'll type something. So I typed something on Facebook. Here's what I typed. Under photos, plain if you go get that. While I'm not really a frequent flyer on the Facebook airlines, I do want to share a piece of good, very good news piece of news that we didn't know we'd ever get to share. Yesterday afternoon, Dad called and said he wanted to let me know something, something good. Okay. And he told me about Mom. Mom had gotten real sick last December, been hospitalized, and then needed to go to rehab. And honestly, we didn't know if she'd ever walk again. It wasn't good. And my mind was reeling on what would this be like with Mom in a nursing home. Well, thankfully, she recovered enough to come home. And she's been gradually gaining strength, shedding daytime oxygen, and walking more confidently around the house. She has COPD, too. Dad called yesterday to tell me that Mom drove for the first time in six months. And she did well. I just want to publicly thank God in this new kind of public forum, forum for his healing work in my mom's life. I typed it. Karen came in. I said, I think I'm supposed to post this. She read it. She said, that's good. So I clicked post. And then it went out to the world. Norm, I don't know how big my world is on Facebook. It's probably not that big. But to me, I was vulnerable. Y'all got to see my heart and my family. And you can't take it back. It's out there. Cheryl is my Facebook mentor. I look up to her. As you heard, Cheryl testified in church on Mother's Day. And God got her ready for it at 5 in the morning. 
And by the time I reinstated one song in that service, she knew she's supposed to testify. And she did. And Cheryl, you know Cheryl's quieter. Fred, I, I invited Cheryl to go visiting with us in two weeks on Thursday night. She didn't say, I'd love to. I said, Cheryl, when the people aren't used to it, we, we just ask you to go with some of us that are used to it. Some of the bigger talkers. Now close your eyes and raise your hand if you're a big talker. Okay? Hands down, eyes open. And you probably pointed to one. We are, we are gifted with talkers. And we're gifted with quiet people. We're gifted with intercessors. So Cheryl will come. But she may go with me or Fred and we'll talk and she can watch. We don't ever make you feel weird about doing something. No, I want you to feel comfortable. If God wants you to do it, you got to do it. But I want to help you do it. All that to say, she's my, she's my Facebook coach. Now, and I appreciate those who affirmed what I put on Facebook, uh, supported me in that. Now I want to talk to you about three points about receiving the power to present. That's, my, that's a testimony on Facebook. I, I gave a testimony on Facebook. Ashton, would you come up here and give a testimony about Project Graduation? Y'all, I want you to hear this testimony. And I could have called on her earlier, but this is a good time. The ministry team, Monday night, we talked about, should we support Project Graduation? Yeah, it's a good thing. We've got seven graduates. Let's support it. Ashton raised her hand and said, I'll do a game. I'll get a table at Project Graduation. We said, great. Mike Aiken and I didn't volunteer to stay up until 3 in the morning with her. But we said, do you need some money? Yeah, 250 Take 250 So she had some money, and her mom got her a table, and she and Benton led a game at Project Graduation. Now, I want to say a word about the game. I just want to preface it. It was a Methodist game. And Methodists, well, you all, Patty and Judy and I are going to annual conference. An annual conference, a man named Adam is going to come and teach us about the church, and he's going to ask us three questions. He's going to ask us, why do people need Christ? He's going to ask us, why do people need the church? And then he's going to ask us, why do people need your particular church? And we've got to be able to answer those. If I was to ask you, why should somebody come to Trinity? I hope you would just open up with a menu of compliments and ministries. I would. Roy. It's Roy and Roy's not here. I've got the Roy shirt on today. I purposely wore this shirt, this coat. I hid it, but I'll tell you more about it later. Roy Woolsey designed this shirt, Trinity United Methodist, Columbia, Kentucky. Because when we go away, there's other Trinity churches. I want people to know I got the one in Columbia. And I will wear this at annual conference. As Methodists, one of our strengths is to connect to our culture. John and Charles Wesley would take pub songs, beer drinking songs, and rewrite the words. And people, I know that melody. And they had new words. Ashton took a drinking game only because she was scrambling for a game, and changed it to Jesus' poem. Ashton. So Friday night, um, Benton and I got everything ready, and I had a game plan before that we were going to do. Tessa looked at me and said, they're not going to do that. So she said, how about we play Pong? I said, Tessa, that's, you know, it's a drinking game. It's normally called beer pong. And I said, you know, if we're in a safe place and this is something they enjoy, then we'll Jesus called. And the water in the cup will be the holy water. So sure enough we did. And as soon as we got there, we got $5 bills and there were people lined up. We had to have a sign-up sheet. We were like the most popular game there. Though. And this was right. So um, if you won the game, then each person got $5. But it was a it, was, it turned a bad game into a good game and a safe game for everybody after graduation to just you know, be safe and enjoy the night. So it was a really, it was a blessing for Benton and I both, and uh, we look forward to doing it next year. Cool. Can I tell you?
tell you how many churches were represented at graduation? 1,500. That speaks. With our banner, Trinity United Methodist, offering the heart of Christ to the hearts of Columbia. Are you ready for this? Roy is so cool. He put the slogan on the sleeve. Offering the heart of Christ to the hearts of Columbia. I'm so excited. Steve, you know what I want on this sleeve? A great place to grow up and a great place to grow old. I'm pumped. I want to buy a hundred of these and have you all wear them wherever you go. Um, Pam, pass this on to Roy. I'm very appreciative. All right, three points on how to receive power to present. Number one, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Pray and ask. The scripture is clear in Luke 11, 13. If you will ask, this is one of the contexts of ask and seek and knock. Jesus says, whoever asks receives, whoever seeks finds, and whoever knocks, the door will be open. And the context finishes up, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So ask. Well, I already have the Holy Spirit. That's true. The moment you accepted Jesus, Zach and Micah and, uh, and, and Jericho, the moment you asked Christ in your heart, the Holy Spirit came in. But also ask that he works in you. Do I have to? Yeah. Ask. But I'm kind of nervous about the Holy Spirit. What if he wants me to do something I don't want to do. Do it. Second point, prepare and expect the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Prepare and expect. The disciples were gathered in the upper room preparing and expecting the Holy Spirit to come. Although they had no idea what that would mean because it had never happened. The Holy Spirit had never fallen from heaven. But when he did, the wind, something like wind blew, something like flame settled. It was the glory of God settled on them. Their hearts were filled, strangely warmed. Their fears were conquered by love and power, and out the door they went. They had the greatest time celebrating Jesus and then sharing him. The skeptical onlookers said they've had too much beer palm. Too much wine. They hadn't. They had a natural high better than any high any substance could ever give you. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Real recovery groups are driven by the spirit of Jesus changing lives. Other recovery groups limp. But a Jesus-filled recovery group works because they're looking for Jesus. And a lot of us don't need a recovery group. We found Jesus. We love him. We want him. We want his spirit. We want to understand the word. We want to share. So ask. And then yield. Tuesday morning, the spirit laid on my heart. Pull out two or three of those choir songs and bring your guitar to the women's meeting. Okay. That'd be fun. I've never been to this barn before. So I made a song sheet Tuesday morning, copied it off, loaded up my guitar, went out to this place I didn't know, ever, never been before, got there, and sure enough, it's a tobacco barn with beautiful concrete floor and beautiful new, new lumber in it, beautiful white lights wrapped around it, beautiful spread of food the women prepared. And after we ate the meal, we sang. And I was so glad, Gail, I brought my guitar because I love to sing. I love country songs. I love country gospel. And I love barns. And I'd have kicked myself if I hadn't brought a guitar so we could sing. I don't know about you all, but I had a good time. And at such a good time, I told the women I could see a camp meeting. And then Gracie, I said, I could see us having a square dance out here. Do you all dance? Square dance, it's very country. I love it. Norma, do you dance? You don't square dance? All right. All right, we'll have a line dance. We'll have something. 
But Gail's daughter, Amy, God has led her to develop a beautiful place for weddings. It's a ministry of hosting weddings. But he, but he put that on my heart. So, And I expect the Holy Spirit to tell me stuff all the time, and he does. And usually it's, that's a good idea. Every once in a while it's, do we have to? She won't like that, or he won't like that, or they may not like that. Do it. You know, I was a little hesitant to sing Looking for Love in all the wrong places. But Dan said, that's okay. And Dan knows you all. So Dan, if you stamped it approved, it's all right. But Dan said, no, you better not do that one. I said, okay, you won't. But I'm debating letting Karen do a, uh, an old country song at the invitation or doing Sweet, Sweet Spirit. They're both good. Which one? The first one would be riskier. But I'll probably have her do it for you because you, if you liked looking for love in all the wrong places, you'll like this one. It's a real tender country song. Anyway, prepare and expect the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Don't be nervous. Just step in. Just start. Thirdly, don't hold back when the Holy Spirit moves in your life. When we had the movie night, the line I took away from it, and I appreciate the authors writing this into the script of that movie, when you hold back, nothing good happens. They said it twice at key points in the movie. Could it be true that when you hold back on the bidding of the Spirit, something good won't happen? That's true. He's bidding you for a reason. He has a blessing for someone. A blessing either on Facebook or the phone book or the cookbook or the big book, which is an AA book. Don't hold back. When God says, do it, do it. In a minute, I'm going to show you a video about inviting people to church. Did you all know that we're ready to grow now? I just wanted to let you know we're ready to grow. And I know you all invite people, but I'd really like you to invite people because we're ready. We've got room. We've got ministries. Now, a lot of churches have that too, but we're ready. We weren't always ready to grow, but we are now. And I, and I wanted to help you to invite people because, uh, you know, first, I don't, people, I don't think people understand. First, I don't th think people understand grace, God's gift. And I don't think people understand Pentecost. If they did, there'd be 250 people here like there was on Easter. But they don't understand. I don't think people understand Trinity. I don't think they know what's going on here. Ashton has just started to put on Facebook some of our singers and some of our events and our, our World War II veteran Simpson. We're just starting to let people know outside the church what's going on now I know y'all share it and talk it but are there other ways we're just starting to talk about billboards for the church billboard I could see a billboard Trinity United Methodist and I could see Summer Brown holding two or three of her children and I can see Nathan Hale and I can see their smiling faces saying it's a great place to grow up and a great place to grow old see it because it is. Let's offer it. So I'm going to push you a little bit. At the ministry team meeting, one of the members said, you need to preach that to us, so let me do it. In two weeks, we're going to go visiting door to door, knocking on doors, inviting people to Trinity. Guess what kind of incredible turnout we had last time? We had an amazing six people. What's that? 3% of the church? 4%? That stunk. We can get more, Mikey. You're ready to go, brother. Go with me. Stay close to me, but go with me. What if, I've already asked the whole ministry team, 
to be out there on the doorstep because they know what's going on in church. They plan it. But what if you all went visiting that night? Fred says in the past, we've invited all of Columbia to come. We've been on every doorstep. It's been a while. Cheryl Wall told me this morning, Fred, someone stuck a VBS flyer on her doorstep, and her doorstep isn't downtown. Every member, I need you to show up on the 19th at 5.30 to go visiting. And if that scares you to death, go with me and Fred. We'll talk. You just let your knees shake, and we don't have to say a word. But show up. And if you're a, a, a regular attendee and you want to come along, great. You're welcome. Many of you know this church a lot better than I do, and you can say a whole lot more about it than I could. Come out. Let me show you a video of the difference it makes when you invite someone to church. Throughout my teenage years, totally straight away from a lot of choices that were far apart from what God's will was for my life. I was that guy in construction. No guy, no, nobody was going to talk to me. I was the big guy. You know, I was tough. Nobody, nobody said anything to me. Went to school on a full football scholarship, and um, really wasn't. I was just your typical football player. Then one day, my sister called me and told me she wanted me to come and take a ride with her working with this this guy that I'd been working with for a couple weeks and um, he was always a little bit different. I had met this guy on our football team. He was older, he was like a junior and um, you could just tell something was different about him. She said, Danielle, you know, the time is now. Why don't you, you know, come back to church? He basically challenged me. He says, Ben, I challenge you to go to church. He ended up asking me to go to church and I found out that he's a Christian. He had a lot of respect from the guys on the team. So that Sunday, I got the kids in the car, and, and we went. So I did. I went that Sunday, and, and it's forever changed my life. I didn't go the first couple of times when he asked me, but he kept after it. And um, when he finally, you know, I finally started going with him, and I, I just got connected with this great group of guys. My, my focus that day when I got there was, well, you know, if this doesn't work for me, then it's definitely a foundation for my kids. I remember enjoying myself in church when I was a kid, so I wanted that foundation for them anyway. It took about four or five weeks for my wife to go, but uh, she she ended up going, and, and um, you know, it was probably six or seven months after that, her mom started going, and then, and then her father started going, and now my parents go. We're all one big happy family. We fill up a row. He trusted God with the outcome and look where it led today. It changed my life, it changed a lot of people's lives in my life, and it's, I don't know, it's just from one person asking. God ended up finding me all over again. I mean, my life did a 180. He asked me, and it was great. You know, God gave him the words at that time to, to ask me to go to church. If that person had never asked me, then my life could be totally different right now. invited you to church? Have you been here all your life? If you're like me, I've been in church all my life. Praise God. Who can we invite? The doorstep is a harder, harder invitation, but hey, let's get out there and ask. The best invitations are to people you know. And you know the people of Adair County. I'm meeting them. They're very nice, but you know them. Please invite them. Ice cream, June 22nd. That's easy. Hey, you want to come have some ice cream with us? Some of our senior girls are going to sing some songs. That's easy to invite to. Time to invite them. The church invited the community so the preacher could preach. Please invite.